Welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Aparna, working as scientist in MFPI Food Quality Control Laboratory, Professor Jay Shankar, Telangana State Agricultural University, Hyderabad. Today, we will learn about natural plant toxicants, the presence of natural plant toxicants in foods and the types of natural plant toxicants which are present in their foods and their hazardous role on consumption. The first thing which we have to see is about the kinds of toxicants which are present. Our food contains in addition to the well-known major nutrients like carbohydrates, proteins, fat and fiber and minor nutrients like vitamins, minerals and non-essential components, there are thousands of naturally present toxic plant compounds also along with the major and minor nutrients. Some of these toxicants are suspected to cause different kinds of problems for the human beings upon consumption. Many of these compounds are commonly termed as nature's pesticides because they are often toxic to the predators such as insects and animals, thereby conferring a competitive advantage to the plants that produce the toxins. Other natural toxins which are present in the plant are not known to have any specific role. Although these chemicals are in every meal which we eat, they have received very little attention compared to the one which is given to the minute residues of synthetic chemicals like pesticide residues which are present in the foods. Our food contains significantly greater amounts of natural plant toxicants and carcinogenics that are synthetic kind and our bodies are unable to distinguish them between whether it is a toxicant or not. Still, while popular notion remains that natural is good, it is clear that natural toxins pose a far greater risk than that posted by the synthetic chemicals in the foods. Coming to the various kinds of natural plant toxicants which are present, let us discuss each one individually. The first toxicants is cannabine. Despite the notion that they are the ultimate health foods, alpha alpha sprouts contain about 15,000 ppm of cannabine. Cannabine is produced in other legumes as well, such as the jack bean. It is an analog of arginine and as such can substitute this amino acid in the cellular proteins, thereby comprising their function. Cannabine inhibits the enzyme nitric acid synthetase and induces heat shock proteins in human cells in vitro. Due to its action and as anti-metabolite, it is under current consideration as an anti-tumor drug in combination with other anti-metabolites like 5-furosyl but has not yet been tested for its carcinogenicity. Cannabine is suspected of causing autoimmune disorders in people such as lupus, etc. Primates feed alpha-alpha sprouts and they develop a severe toxic syndrome which resembles the human lupus. Then coming to the second category that is the cyanogenic glycosides. These are cyanide containing compounds which are naturally present in the seeds which are obtained from apples, apricots, cherries, peaches, pears, plums and also in almonds, sorghum, lima beans, cassava, corn, yam, chickpeas, cashew nuts and other kinds of fruits and vegetables. High cyanide varieties distinguished by their bitter taste may contain about 600 ppm cyanide on dry weight basis. There are several such cyanogenic glycosides of which linamarin, amygdalin and durin are examples. In 1970s, amygdalin has gained notoriety as a fad remedy and preventivative for the cancer and other kinds of elements. Cyanogenic glycosides are toxic by the virtue of release of free hydrogen cyanide which occurs in the plant tissue and is disturbed during the chopping, processing or ingestion. 
These conditions initiate the hydrolysis of glycosidic action of beta-gluconeridase and other enzymes which are naturally present in the plant tissue and in the intestinal lumen. Cyanide is one of the most acutely toxic chemicals which is known. It binds to an it binds to and inactivates heme enzymes which is the most critical of which is the mitochondrial cytochrome oxidase which results in acute life threatening anoxia. The two step therapy is initiated with sodium nitrite which induces the methemoglobinemia permitting the release of cyanide from the heme proteins followed by sodium thiosulfate which acts as a substrate for rhodinase and endogenous hepatic enzyme that catalyzes the conversion of free cyanide to less toxic thiocyanate. Cases of acute poisoning of cyanide which is released from certain varieties of lima beans, cassava and bitter almonds also is very frequently heard of. Due to the importance as a subsistence crop in Africa and South America, cyanogenic glycosides in cassava, they represent the greatest health risk for that kind of population. Cyanogenic glycosides also have been implicated as a causative agent of diabetes in some research studies. Then coming to the next toxicant, it is the allyl isothiocyanates. Allyl isothiocyanates are a group of major naturally occurring compounds that confer a pungent flavor to the foods such as in mustard, horseradish etc where it is present in about 50 to 100 ppm quantity. It is also present at much lower levels in brassica vegetables such as broccoli and cabbage and also in cassava and other types of staple foods. In high doses, allyl isothionides are carcinogenic in rats and it is non-mutagenic in bacteria. Isothiocyanates which occur in cruciferous vegetables such as glucosinolate conjugates are hydrolyzed when the plant releases the enzymes during chewing. Isothiocyanates are toxic goitrogens which inhibit the binding of iodine to the thyroid gland. Because iodine is required for the formation of critical thyroid hormones thyrotoxin T4 and T3, isothiocyanate induced hyperthyroidism mimics iodine deficiency. Hypothyroidism is a physiological response as the thyroid attempts to compensate for reduction in both T4 as well as T3 production. Normal dietary exposure to isothiocyanate containing foods releases milligram amounts of isothiocyanates. Endemic goiter is seen in the geographical areas like India and Africa where the consumption of poorly processed foods is coincident with iodine deficiency disorders. Then let us see about the next plant toxicant that is hydrazines and other toxins which are present in edible mushrooms. The three most commonly eaten mushrooms are the cultivated mushrooms, the shiat mushroom and the false moral mushroom. All these three contain substantial amounts of compounds from the hydrazine family, many of which are potent liver toxins and animal carcinogens. N-methyl, N-formal hydrazine is commonly found in concentrations of up to 500 ppm and it causes lung tumors in mice and hamsters. People consuming a 100 gram serving of these mushrooms and ingesting almost 50 milligrams would be getting very nearly the same dose on as per kg body weight basis as that giving cancer to the mice upon daily exposure. Another carcinogenic hydrogen, methyl hydrazine, is also present in similar concentration to about 14 ppm and whole mushrooms have been shown in numerous studies to cause cancer in laboratory animals but whether it also replicates or mimics in human beings is still uncertain.
then coming to the next toxicant which is present they are the toxic substances which are present in different kinds of spices and flavoring agents first one is safrol estragol miristicin beta acerone piperine and isosafrol which are closely related alkyl benzenes which are found in many spices essential oils and herbs they are also present in much lower levels in parsnips parsley and sesame seeds they are all weak to moderate rodent hepatocarcinogens safrol is found in saffras tree and makes up up to 85% of the oil of the saffras which was once used to flavor root beer however it has been banned as a flavor additive since 1960 but is a minor natural component of nutmeg mace star anise cinnamon and black pepper then we have the isosafrol which is a component of lang lang oil which is a flavorant and scent and is carcinogenic also many of these alkyl benzenes interact with the cytochrome p450 mediated metabolism for example both isosafrol and safrol are powerful inducers of 1a family cytochrome p450 enzymes safrol and isosafrol also inhibit cyp2e1 enzyme and in doing so protect carbon tetrachloride liver toxicity in mice then we have the beta acerone which is a major component of oil of calamus which is derived from calamus root which is a folk remedy for indigestion this was once used to flavor the vermouth and bitters it causes intestinal tumors in rats then we have the miristicin which is a major flavor component of nutmeg which is derived from the dried ripe seed of the tree Approximately 2% of nutmeg is miristicin which is present in the volatile oil which is distilled with steam from dried seeds. Mace which is a closely related spice to nutmeg is a deri- is derived from arillode or outer coating of the seed. The world's principal commercial supply of nutmeg is grown in the Malay Peninsula. and miristicin is found also in black pepper parsley celery dill and carrots as well piperin is the next toxicant and piperin is an alkaloid which is present at high concentrations to up to 10% in black pepper and is largely responsible for the pungent bite of the condiment and powdered piperin berries are added to cigarettes and smoked as a remedy for throat irritation and the oil derived from these berries is added to some throat lozenges also capsaicin is an extremely pungent ingredient which is present almost up to 0.5% in a red and yellow chili pepper for example in capsicum frutensis anum and conoides and due to its irritating qualities to the eyes and mucous membranes a solution of capsaicin is used as an aerosol spray as a popular animal repellent then we have the next component that is glycyrrhizin which is a saponin like glycoside which is derived from the dried roots of glycyrrhiza which is popularly known as licorice and licorice is one of the oldest folk medicine which has been traditionally used as an expectorant flavoring agent and a demucilant also then we have the next one that is d limonene which is a major constituent of citrus oils and it is found in much lower amounts in other fruits and vegetables the major sources of d limonene are oils of orange grapefruit and lemon Citrus peel oil can contain as much as 95% D-limonene and D-limonene per se or citrus oil with D-limonene is a major constituent which have been widely used as flavoring agents or as fragrances in perfumes and soaps and in a variety of foods like ice creams, soft drinks, baked goods, gelatin, chewing gums, puddings, etc. However, the quantum of usage of D-limonene does not pose a major threat. Then we go to the next component that is pyrrolizidine alkaloids. 
Pyrolizidine alkaloids are common plant toxicants which are produced by over 200 species of flowering plants from genera such as Crotalia and Cynoglossum. They are often present at very high levels as much as 5% on the plant's dry basis. Pyrolizidine alkaloids containing plants pose significant health hazards to people who consume some kinds of natural herbal teas and traditional folk remedies and those who eat grain based foods contaminated with this containing with the pyrolizidine alkaloids containing plant parts. Some of them have been investigated in clinical trials for their anti-cancer potential also. Then we have another common herb called as cord's food which is used for centuries as a medicine for coughs and bronchitis in both Europe as well as in Asia. The plant contains pyrolizidine alkaloid at concentrations as high as 150 ppm as well as high concentration of Senexidion, another very toxic and carcinogenic pyrolizidine alkaloid. Again, both the dried buds of the cold's food and purified or sen and purified forms cause liver tumors in rats and both of them are bacterial mutagens. But human intoxication by the pyrolizidine alkaloids containing plants is well recognized as well as reported in the medical literature and is endemic in some countries like Jamaica and some parts of India also. Diseases such as liver cirrhosis, veno-occlusive disorder and liver cancers are linked to the consumption of these pyrolidazine alkaloids. Then coming to the substances which are present in barracfen. There are some kinds of toxicants which are present in these barracan firms also which are widely used as human food as green salads in many countries like New Zealand, Australia, Canada, US and especially Japan. The bracken firm is also a forage plant which is used for sheep and cattle. It first attracted the attention of veterinary scientists who noticed severe toxicity such as bladder cancer, bone marrow depression, severe leukemia, thromocytic cytopenia, hemorrhagic syndrome in the livestock which were grazing on the bracken firm. When fed to the rodents, this fern was strongly associated for causation of strong bladder, lung and intestinal cancers. Lactating cows which were fed with this fern produced milk that was carcinogenic. The major carcinogens which are present in this bracken fen is believed to be which is a potent glucoside and that is present in very high concentration up to almost 1.3% of dry weight basis in the plants. The plant also contains quercetin, campiferol and other mutagenic compounds of the flavonoid family which can contribute to the carcinogenicity and apart from this it also contains some amount of tannins. Then coming to the next toxicant that is acetylcholinesterase inhibitors. Acetylcholinesterase inhibitors are mostly present in potatoes and the members of the Solanaceae family which contain a variety of toxic glycoalkaloids. Potatoes are important staple food in many parts of the world and under certain conditions they produce a variety of glycoalkaloids. Potatoes that have been damaged, exposed to light or sprouted contain these glycoalkaloids which are alpha-solanine and alpha-chaconine which can exceed concentrations of 100 ppm. Higher amounts of these solanine and chaconine are present in potato greens and healthy potatoes contain negligible amount of these toxins. There are episodes of human poisoning by the green potatoes and it has been documented and the poisoning symptoms included gastric pain, weakness, nausea, vomiting, labored breathing which were consistent with the acetylcholinesterase inhibition. 
There are several studies which have indicated that acetylcholine esterases inhibitor activity of solenin is probably insufficient to cause these toxic effects which are probably due to the combined toxicity of solenin along with other choline esterase inhibitors which are present in the potatoes such as chaconine. Most cases of the human poisoning and deaths have occurred in Europe but are occasionally seen in the western hemispheres. Poisoning episodes when on consumption of potatoes are not infrequent in animals which are fed with damaged potatoes or the peel of greens or the trim of the potatoes. A small number of studies with the animals which are fed with the toxic doses of the potatoes have indicated that these compounds may have weak teratogenic effects. Then we have the next toxicant that is the tannins. Tannins have long been known as plant materials that confer a dark color when applied to the animal hides thereby turning them into tanned leathers. Although a precise definition is difficult due to their diverse and polymeric nature, one working definition is that tannins are large group of water soluble polyphenolic compounds with a molecular weight greater than 500 that have a ability to bind or precipitate the proteins. It is their ability to bind to the proteins that is the toxicological and nutritional concern. Tannins also strongly bind to metals such as iron, copper and zinc and reduce the gastrointestinal absorption of these minerals which are very very essential minerals. Two major classes of tannins are proanthocyanidins which are flavonoid polymers and hydrolyzable tannins which are polymers of gallic and elagic acid esterified to either glucose or a polyphenol such as catechin. Then the next toxicant is the caffeic acid or the chlorogenic acid. The caffeic acid or the chlorogenic acid occurs in an extremely wide range of fruits as well as in vegetables. Other minor conjugates of the caffeic acid are also known to exist and upon ingestion of chlorogenic acid which is hydrolyzed in the gastrointestinal tract to yield caffeic and quinic acid. And in humans, caffeic acid is metabolized to alpha-methylated derivatives such as ferulic acid, dihydroferulic acid and vanillic acids and metahydroxylphenyl derivatives which are excreted in the urine. The caffeic acid and conjugates are present in high concentration, more than 1500 ppm concentration in many kinds of seasonings which are consisting of thyme, basil, anise, caraway, rosemary, etc. And it is also present in other seasonings like vegetables like lettuce, potatoes, radish, celery, etc. And in groups and in fruits like grapes, berries, eggplant and tomatoes. Coffee is particularly rich in all these phenolics in addition to many other compounds. And a cup of coffee contains almost about 190 milligrams of chlorogenic acid. These eicosanoids are mediators of a wide variety of physiological and disease states and are involved in immune regulation, asthma, inflammation and platelet aggregation. Then we have the next toxicant that is Caumarin and Sorelin. Caumarin is very widely found in plants such as cabbage, radish and spinach and in plants which are traditionally used as flavoring agents like lavender etc. Caumarin is widely found in herb tea based on tonka beans and sweet clover. And the name Kaumarin, it originates from Kaumaru, the Caribbean name for Tonka beans. And purified Kaumarin was once used as a food additive, but this was again banned by the US FDA after it was discovered that high doses of Kaumarin causes liver damage in the tested animals. Kaumarin is also a powerful anticoagulant and is in fact an active ingredient in many brands of rodent baits. It is also used in human medicines as a blood thinning agent and Kaumarin has been reported to cause bile duct carcinomas also. 
Then we have the sorolins, which are a group of phototoxic components which are present in a number of plant families like APAC, Rutaceae, Moraceae. Celery contains almost 100 ppb of sorolins, while parsnips contain approximately 40 ppm. When activated by the sunlight, sorolins are mutagenic and presumably due to their ability to form the interstand and protein crosslinks with the DNA, many members of this chemical family are considered to be carcinogenic. Dietary exposure to sorolins is probably not a significant health risk, but then the margin of safety is thought to be very, very narrow. Hence. The amount which we consume from these foods, the, the sorolins is very, very important. Then we have the next toxicant that is lathyrogens. Lathyrogens are found in legumes such as chickpeas and derivatives of amino acids that act as metabolic antagonists of glutamic acid which is a neurotransmitter in brain. When lathyrogens are ingested in large amounts by the humans or animals, they cause a crippling paralysis of the lower limb and it also may lead to death. Latherism occurs only on impoverished diet which is fed with latherogenic substances like kesari dal, sweet pea, etc. Then we have the next one that is amylase inhibitors. The amylase inhibitors are nothing but a group of anti-enzymes which are capable of inhibiting amylase which is an enzyme present in the saliva and the intestinal tract which breaks down the starch into glucose. Although wheat contains these amylase inhibitors, wheat is rarely eaten raw and heat destroys this entire amylase inhibitors which is, which is a hazardous toxin. Then we have the next category that is protease inhibitors. Protease inhibitors interfere with the action of trypsin and chymotrypsin which are enzymes produced by the pancreas to break down the ingested proteins. They are found to some extent in cereal grains like oats, barley and maize and they also are found in brussels sprouts, onion, beetroot, wheat, finger millet and peanuts. They are they are supposed to cause pancreatic hypertrophy in the chicks and rats, but no ill effects have been observed in the higher grade animals and mammals. Raw soya bean have high levels of trypsin inhibitors and soya bean fractions high in trypsin inhibitors depress the growth of rats, chicks and mice when tested in the animal studies. But cooking with high temperature largely destroys all the trypsin inhibitors in soya bean and almost all the protease inhibitors. Hence, cooking and processing with high temperature can reduce the protease inhibitors to a larger extent. Then we have the next toxicant that is phytohemagglutinins. We have the lectin proteins or the phytohemagglutinins which are the proteins which are present in leguminous spices that can agglutinate the red blood cells in various species of animals. These lectins are in many species of beans especially red kidney beans and castor beans. Poisoning can occur if those be beans are consumed in raw form rather than in cooked form. Then we have the other miscellaneous flavonoids like quercetin, elagic acid, camphorol, and rutin. The family of chemicals which are widespread in the plant derived foods including the fruits, fruit juices, vegetables, buckwheat, tea, cocoa, red wine, dill, soya beans, bracken fern and others contain these miscellaneous flavonoids. The estimated da daily average intake of flavonoids is roughly around 1 gram. None of these chemicals have yet been cons conclusively shown to be carcinogenic but both quercetin and camphorol are told to be mutagenic. Rutin is not mutagenic by itself but it can be metabolized by the intestinal bacteria to yield quercetin and quercetin has got some amounts of anti-carcinogenic properties.
So today we have learnt about various natural plant toxicants which are present in various quantities in different kinds of edible portions which have been consumed by the human beings since times immemorial. However, when they are rightly processed with high temperature processes like branching, extrusion or high temperature processing like canning etc. We have seen in many cases that most of the natural plant toxicants gets destroyed and then the effect of them is not seen prudently when consumed. To conclude this topic, our food contains naturally occurring plant compounds that have been shown to be toxic or carcinogenic in animals and people. But because it is practically impossible to avoid all the plant derived toxins in the no normal diet, the best way to minimize these potential hazard would be to eat a variety of foods but not too much of any one single dietary item. And because natural chemo preventives are also associated with reduction in risk of many types of cancer, it is also important to include the generous servings of fruits and vegetables in the daily diet and other beans and other things have to be processed pro properly to avoid the hazardous effect of the natural plant toxicants. Thank you.